Hey everybody, my name is Kaylin Ryan and I am here with Too Hot to Handle star Nathan Webb. Everybody give him a virtual round of applause. I get the elf one. Is that a thing? <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. First and foremost, how is your morning going? What did you do when you woke up? That is a fantastic question. Um, I actually, so I've got Pete and Melinda in the room behind us. So uh, I'm, I'm very simple. Woke up, made some breakfast. I was trying to sleep all night last night and there is a parking lot right here. So kids, mm. were just doing, kids were doing donuts the entire night. So didn't sleep. We got in late, didn't sleep. So just get the, get, get the day going. You know, I woke up, be a nice guy, get everyone breakfast. And uh, yeah, we're heading, heading out very shortly. We're going to go shoot some stuff, do some TikToks, do some Instagram stuff, you know, all, all of this fun influencer stuff that we now Right, do. the influencer lifestyle that you are now indoctrined into. That's wonderful. Um, real quick, was that tattoo on you when you were in the show or am I, am I freaking? This is, um, so I, I did have my forearm here. Yes. And then I went ahead and did a full edition, which... There we go. Which means uh, a ton to me. What mm-hmm. every that's on this tattoo means means a lot to me um a lot of people have had a lot of things to say about it so um we yeah. shall moving forward but uh yeah to me personally it has a, a tremendous amount of meaning i'm very happy with it you know i got it's your it. body if it's pleasing to you and it holds significant meaning or weight yeah. it really people <laughs> when we remember <laughs> that <laughs> <a> there <laughs> are people with assignments in life there are those here that mind their business and there's those here to troll so to say or just cast a dark shadow they're doing yeah. their job it would be weird if people didn't have negative comments about your tattoo because yeah. that's someone's position they hold that position to just be weirdos and be mm-hmm. negative so allow them to be them and you continue to yep. be you they're doing I, their I, part and I, and I understand fully that it's a uh, it's a culture that I didn't grow up in, but it's a culture that I admire. It's a culture that mm-hmm. I love. So I wanted to to take a lot of their symbols and all of their meanings and apply it to my own life. So for that's sure, offended some people, and some people love it. So it's just kind of a mixed bag. I mean, if I didn't grow up, I'm Christian, um, but let's just say, hypothetically speaking, I decided to uh, practice the Buddhist religion and now I put Buddha on my body. Is yeah. Are my counterparts from a childhood now able to chastise me because now I've decided to put something on me that the morals and the values speak significantly to my life? That's not fair. I just feel like everybody should mind their business. It's a, it's a tough one. It really is. But we shan't go into that in <laughs> too much detail. I get shoot, Exactly. I get, I get death threats. So we'll just <laughs> go over it. Right? Your eyes. Like. To each his own. We're going to move on with the questions. I'm going to jump into, you were already on a dating show. So the yep. questions have to correlate. What qualities do you look for, Nathan, in a woman? Like probably like top two qualities or however many that come to mind. So I love, I love confidence, right? I, I love a woman that she walks into a room and she knows that she lights up the space. So mm-hmm. that, that I look out for, say I'm in a bar and you can just feel the presence. You know, when a girl walks through the door, if she, if she's glowing and she's so confident in her outfit, in her personality, everything you can tell her chest is out. She's smiling, you know, others, some, some girls kind of walk in, you know, they've got the head down and there's nothing wrong with that. They're just a little, a little shy, but I just mm-hmm. like that. Going like that. Not so much party girl, just just confident. I want to be commanding able to... Commanding the room, commanding yeah. the space. Yeah. Absolutely. It's like a lion or a lioness. I want, that, I want that woman right there that everyone thinks, oh, shoot, who, who is she with? And I get to be the guy that she's with. I know it's, uh, it's not an egotistical thing. It's just, no, no, no. I get exactly what you mean. I love that woman that everyone else wants but may not be able to have. And I want to be able to have. Oh, if, that, if that makes a lot of sense. Hey, I was just talking to my friend the other day about Mm -hmm. a man that I potentially date. He needs to command the room. He needs to own the room. And that doesn't mean that he has to be showboaty or the loudest in the room or trying to do backflips. But when he walks in, he knows he just walked into the room and other people notice as well. You just, that's just my opinion. So I agree completely with you. Uh And it's kindness. You know, I don't, especially the world I'm in now, um, it's it's amazing we we have this conversation amongst all of us that suddenly all of these people are interested in us whether it's 
Instagram models or, you know, it's just everyone on social media suddenly wants to be part of our yep. lives. Yeah. So, yeah. But for me, a lot of the times it, it's kindness as well. You know, I hate, I hate to see, I go through it a lot. I just hate to see people that bash other people. You can find good qualities in everyone, right? So I want a woman that uplifts people. I don't want her to mm. say, oh, have you seen what she's sitting, she's wearing at the bar? Well, those shoes don't. No, yeah, that's not, not necessary. No, no you got to lift each other. So, so that's what it is. Confidence and then just kindness. They're hot. Ladies, if you're listening, Nathan requires confidence. He requires kindness. C and K. Get with it. If you're not confident, I don't know. That's something that you're kind of, it's kind of inward, but grow that, get that going. And if you're not kind, yeah. you should have already been working on that. Nathan requires kindness and confidence, ladies. Let's get that going. Let's get that going. Let's get that going. What are your pet peeves in a woman or in a relationship? Pet peeves. That is a great question. I think, I think I just touched on it. It is. It's just mm. negativity. I try and be very, very positive about a lot of things in life. So just any, it could be the smallest amount of negativity. I just, I, it just, it's just a pet peeve of mine. Yeah. Uh, see, I suck. I absolutely suck with PDA. Suck. Always have. Mm. Oh, so it's, it's a tough one. You know, <laughs> it's not a pet peeve and it doesn't turn me off because I should be better at it. But <laughs> when a girl is in public and she's just like bear hugging you the whole time, that sometimes I'm just, yo, he just, said. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's like, a, especially in Texas, it's 105 degrees. I don't want to hold your hand and stick to you. But yeah. again, that is a fault of mine because I should be better at that. And, and I have been working on it, but we don't need to be all over each other all the time. I feel like it's fair if you let the girl know early on that that's kind of how you feel about the topic so that she doesn't think otherwise. And then now you're trying to let her know in public, like, I yeah. So as long as you're both honest and she lets you know she requires it or she actually doesn't care either. She's like, you know what? We don't even have to look like we know each other. But when we're <laughs> home is when we're home. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going that far. I just, <laughs> come on, just give me, give, give me some time. And it is. And then, and then that goes back to the confidence thing The she, if I'm saying, Hey, just, just let me have my arm to myself for a sec. I don't want her to think that, Oh, this is something against her. Cause it's absolutely yeah. not. It's just, yeah. Yeah. I'm, again, it's something I need to work on, but it's also something that I tend to avoid. Mm, interesting. I'm not mad at that. What was your biggest takeaway from the show as far as a learned lesson or your eyes being open to something different? Uh, so, you know, a lot of a lot of my time on the show, I, I had the conversation with Emily and I speak to speak to Mel a lot about it, but mm -hmm. there wasn't there wasn't my person on the show. Right. Mm -hmm. So. So as, as amazing. I knew as that from the beginning. I was like, yeah. I don't think it's really going to, then you tried and I'm like, uh, no, it, but, but it just, that just wasn't my person. Mm -mm. So and Emily, that, fantastic. They, they were just designed for each other. They're, they're so yeah. perfect. Two jokers behind me, Mel and Pete made for each other, you know, mm -hmm. I had a thing with Marv and Pete mm -hmm. and whatever, but they, they're just, you know, I mean, you should hear them throughout the day. They're, yes. they're made for, <laughs> uh, I wasn't. So, I kind of learned that a lot of times in my dating life, I would try and force things. I would think, mm. you know, I'm attracted to this person, so I need to make it work because she's so gorgeous. But yeah, that's not the case. And I think the whole Larissa thing, she was a fantastic girl, but there just wasn't that connection there. So yeah. I, I've just kind of learned to take a step back. It doesn't have to be a rush. I can, I can really just take things a lot slower because mm -hmm. there will be person again especially being married I thought that that was my one for the rest of yeah. my life it wasn't so mm -hmm. learning curve for me and it sounds dreadful but after my marriage I may have gone a little crazy and thought yeah there's got to be my person out there somewhere so I'll just sample thousands not literally <laughs> not literally <laughs> but yeah you know what I mean so we're all in a okay. process of discovery so you're not yeah. no fault to you you recognized um where you may have been wrong on the show um with what how you handled um your life after the divorce but yeah. we're all we're all doing things and we're all figuring our lives out so in one way yes you could have probably handled it quote unquote better whatever that means but in the next breath it brought you to the person you are now which mm -hmm. when i saw you on the tv i saw you as respectable kind um you didn't seem thirsty for attention and you were confident and yeah. you were kind even when you were realizing that the situation wasn't necessarily meeting your needs, you still handled it in a respectful way. So I think 
that how you had that middle in between divorcing and the show, as interesting as it might may have been, you really are a solid person. That's my opinion from the show. I, yeah, I, uh, and that was one thing. That's why, to this day, yeah. I'm such good friends with every single one. Every single mm-hmm. one of the got we got to go pick Joey and Carly up in about two hours. So all of us, you know, the five of us are here together. Last week yep. I was with Chase and Harry and Pete. And so we're, we're always together. Cam and oh. Robert we're in Vegas in a few weeks. So that's the one takeaway that we're all such good friends. So yes. everything, it wasn't just a TV show. If anything, it brought all of us together. Like, I would never have met Cameron in Wales. I would never have met these two yeah. in New York. Yeah. You know, I don't look at it just... Dude, we're just living kind of it sounds so cliche but we're just living our dreams together does that sound wow. sounds odd <laughs> <laughs> like, I like it though I like it you you it was un it was unexpected but it uh-huh. seemed genuine one thing I hate yeah. is forced family moments or community <laughs> like if we're not vibing we're just not but yeah. it seemed like you guys all had a real love for each other and even at the end when I felt as if you were one of the top two deserving for the prize and even you expressed it in your confessional that you had the most and that brings me to my next question that you were able to refrain from intimacy mm-hmm. and you had the least amount of rule breaks or I think even close to zero I feel it was, was it zero yeah I was like oh he's a shoe in but you still <laughs> paid respect to Marvin and the other because of how how the game goes and how much love you guys have for each other but BC that that also comes back to the my person thing right it was, I, was, I wouldn't say easy. It was easier <laughs> for me not to break the rule because I didn't have that person there. Yeah. And, and if I did, you probably would have seen a different me. You, you <laughs> could, like, there's no space about it, but I wasn't going to... I can, I can get behind Cam losing money with Emily. I can get behind Pete losing money with Melinda. I, you know, I can get behind that because they have so much love for one another. But yeah. Me just being like, you know what, Larissa, let's just let's crack one out. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> complete ways. So yeah. I was... Yeah, I can't take too much credit, but yeah, it, it just, I just didn't have my person there to, to spend money with. I was <laughs> to spend money with. I respect <laughs> that. That was my, that was one of my other questions. <laughs> Makes so much sense. Um, I want to know how your dancing career has taken off since the show and uh-huh. why the identity or the usage of the cowboy hat is implemented into your persona. What does that mean for you and how has your career taken off since then? So, so I honestly, back in May was, was when I took a step away from, from dancing. Um, <laughs> for me, I've always, so back at home, back in the UK, I grew up on a farm. So my grandparents were farmers, always loved con- country music, right? So moving to Texas, it just fit me. All of my friends, <laughs> just your classic good old boys driving lifted trucks. They drink beer on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Right, and right. So those are my best friends. Um, cowboy hats, again, it was just a love. <laughs> I just love Texas. I'm just like an English Texan. So then I incorporated that. I I learned very quickly that at work, women love cowboys. I'm like, okay, well, women also love an English accent. So I'm like, well, why not give them both? (laughs) Blend the two. Yep. (laughs) I like the gar moment. Just this is how I this is how I do it. Um, Yeah, and, and work. I so much fun. It taught me taught me a lot of great lessons. Um, I just did, I just wanted to, it's not something I wanted to do forever. So this was an opportunity. I always want to just move on to the next big thing. So this presented itself to, to go and do this show and have a great time. I mean, even potentially yes. change the, it, it was my, I don't want to say escape because I wasn't trapped there, but it mm-hmm. was my, my way out of, you know, if I do meet a nice girl, eventually, what's she going to do? Bring me back home to her parents and say, this is, Nathan, he's a stripper. You know, it's, it's still the word. I, I'm not embarrassed by it, but the no. word itself, you know, when you hear that word, mm-hmm. it, people have just this negative. They, they always they always do. That's why we say yeah. dance girls. You know, the, the girls get it so bad. A lot of dancers that I know cannot date anyone because all of these guys, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're, their confidence levels, they just don't trust their girlfriends to be dancers mm-hmm. to, and to come home to them. So dancers we would date i would date female dancers because we both understand i know that she's doing Mm -hmm. doing it for the right reason she's dancing she's making a lot of money she's going whatever but guys who aren't in that industry 
are just so insecure about it. They they don't trust them. Oh, well, you must be, yeah, you know what, in the back room to make a thousand dollars. No, you literally, they can literally just sit there and have a conversation with the guy. I was but, just about to say that. Yeah. <laughs> I make two and a half, you know, great money. So mm-hmm. my, uh, my dance career is, is on hold right now. Maybe I'll start learning these TikTok dances and that'll be my... Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm so bad. I'm so, I'm so no, it's okay. Bad. If I wonder, okay, if MTV or VH1 or whoever came up with a show called Dating Dancers, it just popped up in my head. So I'm going to need some type of credit. Whoever sees this interview, um, Dating Dancers, meaning date dancers who are dating, like you just expressed, would you go on that show? Absolutely. In a hobby. In a hobby. Because again, I, I, I understand. I know, of course, there are people that take it to the extreme in that mm-hmm. industry. But it isn't. It's just, it's such a, it launched me from being rock bottom with nothing to being in a very good position after three years. Mm. And my confidence, that's what it was for me. Originally, it was a confidence thing. I had no confidence because of what I had just been through. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going on stage. I can't dance. I'm horrendous. Three years ago, just I was so stiff. I probably have. Not stiff. But it it was fantastic that. (laughs) <laughs> I would go on stage, it's literally women throwing their underwear at me. I'm like, yes, this is in- it's incredible. <laughs> like, I don't, I've gone from this chick, whatever, to mm-hmm. women throwing money at me. This yes. Is, yes, we did great things for my confidence. <laughs> <That's the thing. laughs> it did great things for my confidence. I love that. And I love that you even went on stage, I guess, with your knowledge, knowing that you were stiff and you still pushed yeah. through. And I'm pretty sure you're not as stiff. Well, we saw you on the show a mm-hmm. little bit. Yeah, you're not. I, you're not much, much, I, I've, I see, I just literally just hop around. I've seen the video of my first night and I danced to um, Ed Sheeran's Galway girl or something. Perfect. <laughs> <That's> an, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, hopping around. Because yeah, also mean, I'm terrified. I'm terrified. Just I don't know what to do. So I just shut off, throw my stuff. It's so bad. But hey. I just yeah, now exactly. Look, hey. <laughs> now look at me. Too scam. Oh. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Nathan, you are too <laughs> much, truly. He said I'm Ooh. loose. I'm, I'm done. <laughs> you answered pretty much a lot of my questions w- embedded within questions. Okay, let's get to this one. What's next for you? What do you have going on next? That is a great question. Um no pressure because living in the moment yeah. is also a plan as well. Yeah. So I think for so long, I always had to be doing something. You know, mm-hmm. I've just for the last three or four years, I've worked six days a week. You know, I, I hadn't taken a weekend off in two and a half, almost three years. Oh, no. Because right? because well, <laughs> work weekends, you're back. Mm-hmm. Rep, whatever. Yeah. Oh, my bad. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's been nice this summer just being able to breathe and mm-hmm. travel to places that I've never been to. You know, I've been to LA twice in the last three weeks and I haven't been since I was 16 years old and I've been now twice in two weeks so mm-hmm. this summer I'm just relaxing I don't want to think about the next thing yep I maybe ask me the question again in maybe September you know I've, I've had my fun I've had my two or three months mm-hmm. of relax yes then I, uh, I would I would think fitness wise love fitness always had a passion for fitness so something down that route whether it be you could definitely model i'm sure there's campaigns or you don't have to speak on it because some things are contractual i'm sure but i'm sure you have a lot of brand endorsement campaign ideas and stuff on your way or already taking place absolutely and that's you know i have a great team all of us are so blessed that netflix is a fantastic company to to ever Mm -hmm. be involved they they do that it's not just they don't just churn these shows out and like, okay, guys, thanks. Yeah, Next. yeah. They every day they're messaging us, they check in with us. Do you need anything? Can we put you in contact with anyone? So, of course, wow. they don't they don't set up your deals and whatnot, but they will put you with the right people that can maybe manage you. And mm-hmm. and it's fantastic. I can wake up hungover. I could be having a you know, and I and I'd literally I'll get a pop up on my email like hey you have an interview at one okay great good I don't even have to think about it my telephone just tells me someone's someone even puts it in my phone for me wow like, yeah you gotta be very here hands time. off very yeah. hands off yeah but you're deserving of it you you guys put on a great show each of you had your own personalities mm-hmm. and it was wonderful to see because I don't typically I watched the first season of Too Hot to Handle and I enjoyed it for the sake of it was a new concept 
But I truly mm-hmm. enjoyed you all season. I don't know, maybe it was the personalities, Melinda and her back and forth and her personality. <laughs> and then you and you were so kind. And then Emily and him and they were just struggling. They could not get it together. Yeah. Um, so it was beautiful to see you all on TV. So you guys deserve all the opportunities coming because yeah. you guys put on a great show for sure. It was it was so much fun. It was so I much could fun. Imagine well, you guys it, the view you guys had every day, the view. Oh, it's incredible. Absolutely incredible. And it there's so much. You think that we've had to condense, what, three and a half, almost four weeks into 10 hours. So, you know, mm. that, that or probably the best of what it was. But it just does. It even doesn't do it justice. How much fun and we all had together. Just wow. If if there could be like an uncut version of <laughs> three and a half weeks, what they did, it, you would you guys would love it. But yeah, they, they had to cut it down to the to the 10 hours, I suppose. But wow, yeah, we had so much fun. We really did. I can only imagine what took place that wasn't allotted for the yeah (laughs) you're funny (laughs) that's the grave so (laughs) take it to the grave okay i am curious Uh what's your craziest dating story or experience like whether it been a blind date a first date or a a crazy breakup excluding your divorce um out of respect yeah well so okay so i will say that it was with it's it's a very long winded story that I'll try and condense. So it was with my ex wife. Got it. Uh, so what happened was I was in Panama City Beach spring break with uh, with all my friends. So we went to a bar. We went to one bar, which was where we were going to stay for the whole night. We were we we're going to that bar. We got to the we got to the front of the line. One of my friends didn't get in because he had a fake ID. Mm. So we wasn't allowed in. Whatever. All my friends went in, and he was like, "No, no, no. I'll, I'll go back to the hotel. Whatever. I don't need to." I don't need to go out with you guys. Like, no, I'm coming with you. We'll go find another bar. Oh. So we drove miles to another bar called Sand Bar in Panama City Beach. Walked in and I met this girl, which was Ashley, which is my ex-wife. Had a great <laughs> night with her. Yeah. Gosh, I got drunk, so, so drunk. I fell on a sun lounger on the beach. <laughs> and, uh, never got her name. I didn't get her name, didn't get her phone number, anything. I just remember having a great night and I woke up on a sun lounger. So buddies came and picked me up. Mm-hmm. The next night, again, all of my friends went to a separate bar. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go back to this bar and see if I can find this girl. So I drove 20 miles back the other way to Sandbar. I walked, I promise you this, true story. I walked in mm-hmm. and first person that was stood at the bar was Ashley. And oh. she was in front of me. So I just, I was like, I went up to her and I said, hey, I, you know, I can't, I can't lose you for a second night. So I have to at least get your name, at least get your number. So, so, so to me, that was, that's why I think, like I say, my person, there's just too much things, too many things that happened for me to meet her, you know, yeah. for him, to, for us to go to this bar, yep, yep. Me, back to that bar and she'd be there. And she so. was right there. Yeah. Yeah. So you have again. another experience like that on the way with yeah. your next um, person, so to say, oh, using your term. I yeah. Like, or so Chipotle or something, you know, just, yeah. yeah. I can't wait. I can't, but. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be something so chill that you're not even gonna be aware of it. It probably won't happen by way of DM or Instagram. It'll <laughs> literally probably happen like you said, Chipotle, or you going to get gas and the person in the back aisle getting chips is the girl. Uh huh. Oh, absolutely. And and it is. It's it's crazy. We we all joke about this every day, but just thousands of DMs every day. <laughs> I could I could imagine. I can oh. imagine because now they're aware you already were who you were. I'm pretty sure yeah. you already had your own following and, and, and people that loved you. But now mm-hmm. I don't even know how you guys handle your DMs. What do you do? Like mute it, like turn it off. So a, it lot of, a lot of it is requested. So, you know, you mm-hmm. have to accept the DM or whatever. And some of them are just hilarious. You know, <laughs> I do try, we all try and go through as many as possible yeah. because someone's taken time out of the day to write us a message. You know, sometimes it's, you suck you're a whatever and you're like okay gone. perfect but yeah some, thank you <laughs> and for me personally as well I love the ones that even guys will message me and say hey man I really appreciate seeing you break down on tv because I'm yeah. going through this women will message me and say hey my husband just cheated you on know, me whatever you seem to be doing great it gives hope to us all so yes. those are the, I love. I'm not saying I don't love to receive the ones that have like allow a picture those are great sometimes <laughs> <laughs> that's not bad you know that's not terrible <laughs> but yes i completely get you it's the well wishes it's the well wishes that um i do to try and respond to as much as possible 
Oh, wow. Well, Nathan, I have truly enjoyed this interview. Um, <laughs> you are who you are on television here. So that speaks to your character. And I had a blast. I hope you did too. I did indeed. I think we're going to go, I'm going to go and rush these people. They want to go to Malibu. So. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. I was just in Malibu last week, so. See, we, we've never been. We're going to go, I think it's called Matador Beach or something. I know, I yeah, know. yeah, 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 been there. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Okay, yeah. People yeah. that go and, like, Mel can take some great bikini pictures and. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's going to kill it. She's <laughs> going to kill it. I'm sure you all are. All the content's going to be great from today. Wonderful. Well, Is there any last thing you want to say to your fans and your supporters? Well, I just. I love, like I said, I love all these messages. I promise you, I go through all of them. I respond to as many as I can. I didn't realize that, so Pete showed me last night that Snapchat has like an allow thing or whatever. So I've been mm-hmm. getting all of them, get so many phone calls that comes through on Snapchat because I guess I allow <laughs> for me. So I do, I do answer them, oh. but some, but not at like 4.30 in the morning sometimes. Yeah. But, There's but restrictions. I do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> beautiful well nathan i'm wishing you nothing but the best i can't wait to see all the campaigns the fitness campaigns the the brandon deals the calvin kleins the the armani the colognes i could just see you doing it all even in being booked into a movie with dancers like who are highlighting dancers on the magic mic type spectrum i can definitely see you in that i'm wishing you nothing but the best in abundance and again i really appreciate you for this interview thank you for having me I really yes, you it. all have a great day, a wonderful will, day. I'm gonna you. go follow you on Instagram after this. Yes, this I will, I will see it. I will see it, and I will follow you back instantly. My name's Kaylin, by the way, so you'll see K. Ryan, and that's me. Perfect, pleasure. Bye. Bye. You have a great day. Where is the buzz you said was mine? Where is the buzz? <laughs>